have to file a motion for review and have a hearing thereon, which we did. We're here for Sian Massey. We're here every court date, every time we walk in this building, every time Sean Grayson is scheduled for court, you will see the Massey family. The judge then denied uh, Mr. Grayson's release. He stood on his first decision. And Sean Grayson has pleaded not guilty to murder, aggravated battery with a firearm, and official misconduct. This comes after he was denied a pretrial release earlier this month. Former Deputy Sean Grayson will be at this 9 a.m. pretrial hearing today, where the judge and attorneys will go over the facts of the case. A third call was made by Massey's mother, who told emergency dispatchers her daughter was suffering from a mental health breakdown and that she feared police. Now, records released by Illinois authorities show that two 911 calls were made from Sonia Massey's home in the days leading up to her death. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We rebuke this discriminatory criminal justice system in the name of Jesus. Last week, we appealed that to the 4th District Appellate Court. That's going to take probably three, four months to get a decision out of the appellate court on that. Shared responsibility. The second deputy had a clear job, keep Sonia Massey safe from his out of control colleague. Instead, he not only dropped the ball, but also helped paint a false picture of Massey as a threat. So here's the scoop. On July 6, 2024, Sonia Massey, a 36 year old unarmed black woman was shot by Sheriff Deputy Sean Grayson in a truly shocking case that was caught on camera. She called the police to her Springfield, Illinois home because she was freaked out about a possible prowler outside. When Grayson and his partner showed up, things took a terrible turn. Grayson ordered Massey to turn off her stove, which had a pot of boiling water on it. Then, out of nowhere, he started hinting that she might throw the water at him. Before Massey could even react, Grayson shot her in the face while she was cowering on the ground. What should have been a routine interaction turned into a horrific scene. Grayson is facing serious charges, three counts of first degree, aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct. But what about the second deputy? He seems to have skated through this mess relatively unscathed. The media is focusing on the fact that he had his body camera on and tried to give Massey some first aid, but come on, doesn't he share some of the blame for letting his partner gun down an unarmed woman? It's time to take a closer look at his role in this tragic event. We have to file a motion for review and have a hearing thereon, which we did. We're here for Sonia Massey. We're here every court date, every time we walk in this building, every time Sean Grayson is scheduled for court, you will see the Massey family. The judge then denied uh, Mr. Grayson's release. He stood on his first decision. Instead of just pretending to help after Sonia Massey was shot, the second deputy had a real chance to save her life. If he had stopped Sean Grayson from pulling the trigger, Grayson might have thought twice and Massey could still be here today. And here's the kicker. Sean Grayson wasn't the only one spinning the story that they feared for their lives. When Massey followed Grayson's order to deal with the boiling water, both deputies actually stepped back from the kitchen. By doing this, they both implied that Massey was a threat, even though she was being polite and cooperative. And when Grayson suggested loudly that she might throw the boiling water at him, the second deputy even joined in by aiming his weapon at her. On top of that, the second deputy had a Norse tattoo on his forearm, a symbol that's increasingly being co-opted by white supremacist groups. Given his apparent lack of concern for Massey's safety and his role in backing up Grayson, it's not crazy to think that racial bias might have influenced his actions. Yes, Grayson was the main aggressor, and he clearly had it out for Massey, a black woman, turning a routine call into a nightmare, but the second deputy had a duty to step in and protect her from Grayson's reckless behavior. Instead, he played along with Grayson's dangerous narrative, making him just as complicit in this tragedy. While it's good to see Grayson facing fight degree charges, let's not forget that his partner's failure to act and his possible biases shouldn't go unnoticed or unpunished. Let us know what you think about this in the comments below. Gr as soon, if you watch that video, as soon as she says, in Jesus' name, I rebuke you, he switches up. Just said that, and I only God knows where that came from, if it was just a random thought, or if she sensed spiritual danger. All she says to him is something verbal and spiritual, which is, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. A lot of rumors are going around on the internet that Sonya Massey didn't throw the pot at the police officers. Now, if you're going to make a fair argument, you need to know what actually happened. Does Grayson's shooting of Massey fall within the legal boundaries? 
you're not an expert in this and you're not looking at the legal argument. That it was Massey who called the police for help in the first place. That the shooting occurred in Massey's own kitchen. That she was black and the officers were white. Did Deputy Sean Grayson, at the moment he fired that bullet through Sonia Massey's head, presenting as an unlawful, imminent, deadly force threat to himself, the element of reasonableness, both subjective and objective, is consistent with Sean Grayson's claim of self-defense. Sean Grayson did not imagine this boiling water. You know, it's not like she has a gun. It's not like she has a knife, you know, to threaten the, the life of this officer or sheriff or what have you. Maybe she sensed it. Her spirit probably knew, like, this is a bad cop right here. And he pulls it right away. He's like, no, you won't. That to me is wild. And right after casually, he's like, nah, she's back. Grayson in court. Former Sangamon County Sheriff's Deputy Sean P. Grayson is set to make his first traditional pretrial court appearance at 9 a.m. Monday. This is the next step in his legal journey after being charged with the slaying of 36-year-old Sonia Massey, a black woman and mother of two in her home on Hoover Avenue. Grayson, 30, is also facing charges for aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct, and he's pleaded not guilty to everything. The release of the body cam footage a month ago sparked a global outcry, with protests hitting major U.S. cities and even Springfield. It also led to the retirement of Sheriff Jack Campbell and the formation of the Massey Committee. So what's happening on Monday? It's a pre-trial call, which is essentially a status update with the judge, the attorneys, and the defendant to discuss the case's progress. This is Grayson's first traditional pre-trial appearance. He's been present for his arraignment on July 18th and attended a pre-trial detention hearing via Zoom. Expect Judge Ryan Cadigan, along with First Assistant State's Attorney Mary Beth Rogers, to discuss any motions, evidence, and experts, and set a date for the next pre-trial call. Grayson will be represented by Springfield attorneys Daniel Fultz and Mark Wyckoff. At his arraignment, the courtroom was packed with uniformed personnel, and Grayson, who's still in custody after being denied pre-trial release on August 9th, was handcuffed and shackled at the defense table. His defense team had already filed an appeal against the detention decision. Family members of Sonia Massey are likely to be there too, as they have been showing up at court hearings wearing shirts and buttons with her image. So if you're keeping an eye on this case, expect to see a continued presence of Massey supporters. A little ticked over asking her for her license. She didn't have to give him her license. She was in her home. He's standing pretty close. Situational awareness. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And that man lost his shit. I will say it with until I turn blue in the face. And literally her in cold blood. He says, huh? She says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This sets him off. He goes off at being rebuked. I believe this wholehearted. Better effing not. Or I swear to God, I will shoot you in the effing face. They were irritated going up to her door. This was an innocent woman. Okay? I could hear it in their voice asking her for her ID. He saw her put the pot down. He keeps saying, drop the pot, drop the pot, drop the pot. This guy should have never been in law enforcement and he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah, she's still breathing, but she's losing a lot of blood. No remorse, nothing. Red flags ignored. Sean Grayson has a troubled past that should have raised red flags. He was booted from the army after two DUI convictions, both times with a weapon in his car, but somehow that didn't stop law enforcement agencies from handing him a badge. Before he started his turbulent career in policing, spanning six jobs in four years, with the first three being part-time gigs, Grayson was convicted twice for driving under the influence in less than a year. These DUIs led to his dismissal from the military in early 2016 after he had an unregistered gun in his vehicle during one of those stops. Despite this shaky history, the Sangamon County Sheriff's Department hired him in May 2023. Law enforcement experts say Grayson's track record should have prompted a deeper investigation. Chuck Wexler from the Police Executive Research Forum pointed out that multiple DUIs and a pattern of short-term jobs should have made hiring agencies question whether he was a good fit. Grayson's military career ended with a general discharge under honorable conditions, a step down from an honorable discharge because of those civilian DUI charges. 
While his attorney, Daniel Fultz, hasn't commented, experts like Sean Smoot from the Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board are shocked that Grayson was hired with such a record. Some departments might not hire someone with even one DUI, let alone two, Smoot said. Grayson's stint before joining Springfield's force included a year as a deputy sheriff in Logan County. He was criticized for failing to follow orders during a high-speed chase and was told he needed more training. Reports from his previous job in Auburn also showed he was early to work and eager to learn, but struggled with paperwork and evidence handling. Grayson's time in Logan County wasn't without controversy either. There were complaints from people he had arrested, including allegations of misconduct. He resigned before the investigations into these complaints were completed. The body cam footage from the night of the shooting shows Grayson and another officer arriving at Massey's home, where they find no sign of a prowler. After waiting for Massey to respond, Grayson makes an unsettling comment and calls for her impatiently. When Massey, who had mental health issues, says, don't hurt me, Grayson's response is condescending and impatient. In the footage, Grayson instructs Massey to move a pan of boiling water from the stove. As Massey sets it near the sink and utters a religious rebuke, Grayson pulls his gun. Despite Massey's apology and her apparent confusion, Grayson fires three shots, hitting her in the face. He then makes no immediate effort to help her, saying, that's a headshot. She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came out with blowing water. That's what all this is. I was standing right here. All right. Any damn suspect? Me. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't yeah. know what happened. <clears throat> yeah, I'm good. Fucking just crazy. Uh, he's got tape. I, I think I got a roll. Former police officer Calfani Tour, now a criminal justice professor, says Grayson's actions reveal a depraved indifference to human life and that such behavior is consistent with a troubling profile. Tour believes Massey was likely confused by Grayson's aggressive commands and that he should have used less lethal options like a stun gun or chemical spray. Wexler adds that Grayson's quick move to lethal force was a major mistake. He should have slowed things down, communicated better, and had a backup plan rather than escalating the situation by pulling his gun and giving orders. That's all for this video, folks. Join us next time.